a welcome to my channel. I'm Andrea and welcome to our kitchen. Today we have another recipe for you and another wine review which will all be done by my husband Rico. I'll be doing the hard work which is um, producing, editing and uploading. But before we get to all of that, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already and whilst you're there, press the bell which will notify you every time I upload a video. Michael, over to you. What are you cooking and what are you reviewing? Well, first of all, we'll talk about the wine that we are going to review today. We are going to have a red wine today. This particular wine is from the United States. It's a Californian wine. It's a Zinfandel. It's, it's labelled as a Carnivore Zinfandel from California, 2017 vintage. Car Carnivore is basically the brand name of this wine. It's part of the Gallo group of wines and they have a huge portfolio of wines. And this is obviously particularly targeted at to, to accompany meats. It's a 2017 vintage, as I said. It's a natural cork. It's 14.5% alcohol by volume. And let's talk a little bit about the grape Zinfandel. Zinfandel was introduced to the Americans, or we believe it was introduced to the United States, from Croatia. It has a sister grape in Italy, which the Italians call Primitivo, which has the same genetics as this, as Zinfandel, and that was, they say, was introduced to Italy, also from, from Croatia. And the grapes are identical. And they produce these two wines in America, obviously in the United States, they market it as Zinfandel. And now where this comes from is the Lodi Valley, and it is the, the Zinfandel capital of the world. But in Italy, it's Primitivo. And in Italy, it grows right down in the heel of Italy in Apulia. But the wines are very different and Zinfandel has its own distinct character and the Italian one has its own distinct characters and that must be all down to the terroir and the way the wine is made. See I always associate Zinfandel with a rosy wine. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a red wine that's well, a Zinfandel. Zinfandel is a black grape and I believe that when they first did the rosé it was done, just done as an off thing. Let's just produce this wine for this season. And they made a rosé out of this black grape. Because you, you can imagine when, when they press a grape that's black and then they use the skin to colour it, the wine will be quite dark. So obviously they did this experiment and they made this white, they called it a white Zinfandel. And of course it exploded the wines gone mega now. So they never stopped making it. Is this a dry? This is a dry red So wine. dry, oh, okay, because Zinfandel's yes. not dry, well, rosy is Zinfandel's not dry. So they're normally medium, medium or medium sweet, but this is a dry red wine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this wine just now, I'm going to decant it, and then we'll go on to the food. Smells delicious, and we'll just put it through the aerator as well. This reminds me of Christmas Day when we decanted the um, what was it called? Pingus. The Pingus. But we also decanted the 2011 Amarone, the Lavalpa de Cherabola Classico. If you want to see that and you haven't, that's on my Christmas Day vlog. Certainly doesn't have the body of the Pingus, does it? I can still this remember a, this that. A, this is a different wine. Our ingredients today are, we've got beautiful fillet steak, Scottish fillet steak here, which we got from Strachan Butchers in Blantyre, one of our local butchers. We have haggis, whiskey. And this is a timorous beastie. Yeah, th 
This actual whiskey is a blended malt. It's not a single malt, it's a, a highland blend of malt scotch whiskey. Okay, and where does the word timorous beasting come well, from? It's a, a take from one of Burns' famous poems, To a, to a Moose. And the, the opening line in, of the poem is, We sleek it, cowrous, timorous beastie. Which and that's means? That's where that comes from. Well, it basically means it's this cowardly, timorous little mouse. And where he actually got that from was when he was ploughing the field and he disturbed the mouse's nest in the field. And the wee beastie was there, sort of shivering in the field. That's where that sort of opening line comes from. So, we're trying to explain who Mr. Burns was because some just may not know. Well, the actual recipe today is maybe it's formed on a Burns supper. Burns was a famous Scottish poet and songwriter, famous for several pieces. Probably the most famous piece is Old Lang Syne, which, all, which we all know is sung at New Year or after a party. And he's wrote several f famous poems, mainly in Scottish dialect, which are translated into English. And that's where you get these words, timorous, it's from the Scottish dialect and beastie and Old Lang Syne, which basically means till we meet again, but it's the, 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 the actual translation is Old Lang Syne, Old is Scottish for old, Lang for long, and the sign for sake. So it's Old Long Sake, that's the basic translation of that. And uh, it's a tradition, it's become a tradition that um, on the 25th of January, it's a celebration of Burns, and they have these functions or do's, and the traditional thing is to have haggis, neeps and tatties, and there's a lot of rigmamalia that goes along with it, and they, they address the haggis, and there's poems recited and, and whatever. So we're going to go back to the recipe. So wait a minute, before we go back to the recipe, you said uh, tatties and... Haggis, mince and tatties. Well, haggis is, in Scottish, it's described as a pudding. It's basically sheep's liver, sheep's heart, sheep's lungs, and they mince it all up, mix it with suet and spices and oatmeal, and then wrap it in sheep's stomach. Lining. Lining, yes. But they also put it in man-made li linings as well. And there are vegetarian versions. And tatties are? Tatties are potatoes, mashed potatoes, and, and neeps is a Scottish word for turnip. So here we have the tatties, and here we have the, the neeps, neeps. Yeah. and here we have the haggis, the haggis. Which brings me on to back to the recipe because we went a bit off track here. So we said we have the fillet here, yep. we have the haggis here, yep. we have the blended whiskey yep. right here, which is a Scottish whiskey. Scottish whiskey. Okay, yep. and then? We have some cream, we have some whole grain mustard. And I've got a little beef stock as well if I need it. Okay, so we've got the beef stock there and yep. then the olive oil for frying. Yep. Basically, that's going to be for your sauce to top the steaks. Yes. Okay, well, and that's your veg. Veg. The veg, obviously, I've pre-done that, so it's, it's ready to so Just add in oil onto the steaks. Okay. We've got the pan on heating at the moment. Sorry. Just seasoning the steaks with some salt. And some pepper. So you season the steaks yep. in the plate before they go yep. into the pan. Yep. Are you going to season them again? I'm going to season them again. Okay, and then you're just doing the same on the other yep. side. Okay. Well, just turn them over a couple of times like that, just to get some oil on the other side. Don't want too much oil. Just a wee touch in the pan as well. So just, just adding some oil into the pan, not it. too much, just to kind of Grease up the pan a little. And what we're going to do is, we're going to put the steaks into the pan, we're going to cook the steaks off, and then I'm going to take the steaks out the pan and finish the sauce in the pan. But I want the flavours of the beef into the pan because there's not a lot of other ingredients going into the sauce. Okay. So 
obviously he's putting the steaks in at different times because I like mine cooked further on. Yep. So mine would probably be uh, medium to well. Medium to well, yeah. And Nico likes um, a more rare steak. Yeah, medium rare. Medium rare. Okay, just going to turn my steak here. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn my steak so you put it on the one side, hand it, and you still have to put yours in. No. Going on now. Okay, so you're now going to put the haggis into the oven. Correct. So the oven, not the grill. Into the oven. Into the oven. Yep. So you're just basically heating that through because the haggis is cooked. Well, when you when you buy the haggis, it's encased in the the fat in the the stomach skin so to speak you normally bring that into a pot and you heat it up slowly in a pot of, you put it in cold water and you bring that cold water up to a heat and cook it for about 40 minutes so it cooks through because they're quite big right but this came off of a haggis stick right and that will only take 10 15 minutes in the oven and it will cook through right so you don't need to boil no, it and do no, all of that okay no. Jaco just turning his steak off now, I'm sorry, I have to keep it in the fan on and then forgetting to switch it off again. Adding the whiskey to the steak. I'm back. Whoa! <laughs> oh gosh, that... Oh my goodness, I can smell the whiskey. That never fails to shock me every time. And you know, I used to actually flambe uh, crepes in the restaurant and I'm still when Rico flambees, he flambees. Okay, steaks are being taken out. Rico says to let them rest. Okay. And I'm just going to add a wee touch of this stock to the pan. That's the beef stock added. Picking up all the flavours from the pan. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of whole grain mustard. Maybe one and a half. Double cream. Okay. So how much was that? What's the size of that? 200 mils, I would say 150. 150 mils of cream. Just adding some pepper to the sauce. Okay. Just letting all the flavours come together. Cook the cream off a little so it's not too sweet. So you've had that going for about five minutes now. A bit fine now. I'm just going to just drop just a wee, wee bit more stock in there and then we'll get it ready to serve. That's it. It's got a nice consistency now. Haggis is now out of the oven. And we're going to plate. Okay, so that's the haggis now in the mould, or the mould over the haggis. I'm adding some mashed potato to the haggis. When I said mashed potato, I meant uh, tatties. Now he's adding the neeps, which is the uh, swede. Voila! Look at that! How beautiful does that look? Steak going on. And 
and lay the whiskey sauce. That's it. Ready to taste the wine. Very dark colour, which I expected being a black grape and a sort of black Ooh. skin. Lots of berries. That's what it smells of berries. Very smooth, the tannins are not strong, it just it glides down. You just feel a wee soft tannins there at the back of the cheeks, and it's a lovely wine. When it on the palate, I'm getting a bit of almost I would say sort of a coffee, a coffee type aftertaste. Beautiful wine, beautiful wine. I'm going to actually taste my steak now as well. Oh. <laughs> that's my that's my department. That's right. So mm. can we just there's Rico steak there, medium to rare. You can see the redness in the steak. Lovely. Why don't you have a taste of the wine, honey? Okay. Now remember I'm not a red wine drinker. I am pleasantly surprised. I am very surprised. Did you get anything when, on the nose? That, did you smell? What flavour did you smell off the wine when you smelt it? No. You didn't get anything? I'm not getting coffees or chocolates or anything mm. like that. But I certainly would say it's a lovely red wine easy drinking yeah it's lovely let me taste let me taste my steak with the wine and this steak whiskey sauce oh mmm <laughs> mmm lovely tender steak Beautiful sauce, beautiful. I'm just going to taste the um, haggis. In a word, amazing, absolutely Good. amazing. Well, on that note, cheers. cheers, darling, and here's to the bard. To the hood. Robbie Burns. Oh, right, this okay. is referred to as the bard. <laughs> no, I'm not. What it's called. Anyway, I'm going to link a couple of videos here, here. And if you're not already subscribed, we'll just press the A here. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.